Thanks a lot. And uh, again, I'm very pleased to be able to uh, be part of this discussion today. So I will go, go through the uh, different strategy toward the elimination of cervical cancer as a public health problem. So first, I wanted just to remind um, us, all of us, that for some time and a few years already, WHO has promoted the LAF course approach to cervical cancer control. And this is a uh, um, related to the introduction of HP vaccine as primary prevention to prevent HPV infection, and of course, secondary prevention with screening and treatment of all women over 30 years of age, and then access to uh, treatment for women with invasive cancer. So this is really the three pillars of the, of the strategy that's been recently uh, adopted by all the member states. So although we have this cost-effective intervention, we see really this growing inequities in cervical cancer and a huge heterogeneity in terms of cervical cancer incidence across countries, with the high incidence in, in, in Africa and particularly in the country affected uh, uh, by HIV, but also in um, South America and uh, the Western Pacific region. And even more than that, for the, for the countries um, affected with the HIV, a recent study that uh, was led by the HIV department here, and which is published now in the um, Lancet Global Health, show that there is women uh, with HIV are six times more likely to develop cervical cancer than other women in this country with a high HIV incidence. So it's really something that needs to be addressed and, um, and, and better controlled. And this is the reason why in May 2018, the WHO Director General really did a call to action to eliminate cervical cancer. This call has been really endorsed by many of our partners, UN agency, and together we've we have developed this strategy toward the elimination of cervical cancer. So I wanted just to come back and to clarify what we mean by elimination, because we hear a lot, you know, the use of control or even eradication, where really we have specific definition for each of these uh, words. So we're speaking here about the elimination as a public health problem. So control is the, it's about the reduction of, of the incidence or the morbidity. Eradication is the permanent reduction to zero of an infection of a disease. And the big difference between eradication and elimination and control is for eradication, there is no intervention measures that are needed anymore. So it's eradicated, it's eradicated. For control and elimination, continuous intervention measures are needed. And for public health problem, it means that we need to achieve a clear and commonly agreed target definitions. So that's what we've been doing, really, with this group, the definition of elimination uh, threshold. So we have an expert advisory group and many technical experts and partners in countries, and we have already uh, looked at different aspects, the variation in cervical cancer incidence, the uh, EU rare cancer guidelines, the published evidence of cervical cancer elimination modeling, and the, we did also comparative modeling work to assess the threshold feasibility in terms for timing. So first we looked really at this map who was prepared by the, uh, uh, the group in IARC, and you see that the, the, there is a huge heterogeneity in cervical cancer incidence across countries, and in fact it's, it's different uh, uh, region of the world, and it goes from less than two um, cases per 100,000 women a year, up to more, almost 80. So we really had long discussion around this graphic, and we see that if we had put the threshold uh, for elimination at 10, many countries would have already eliminated cervical cancer, but not that much impact on cervical cancer. So we decided to have the threshold at 4. So that when we look at what will be the impact? And I'm not going to go into the modeling work and anything because it's published. We had lots of uh, modeling impact on mortality, on morbidity and cost effectiveness modeling. But the summary is here. What we say that we, we agree that the elimination uh, should be at four. So this is the dot line here. Four cases per 100,000 women a year. And it, it needs to be achieved by the end of the century. And it's feasible. So. It's feasible if we have specific strategy. If we continue as we do now, we will never, you know, it's the gray line here, we never reach anything and we are throwing money out of the window, basically. 
If we do only intensive vaccination program, we will reach the elimination goals, but we will reach very late in time, you know, about 2100. So if we do intensive screening and vaccination, that's really when we can reach the elimination for, you know, many, most of the country by the end of the century. But in order to reach that, we need to be, to reach the 2030 targets, which is 90, 70, 90. And I'm going to detail that. So in a, in a uh, nutshell, we, we propose the threshold for elimination at less than four cases per 100,000 women a year. If we want to reach the threshold before, for more than 95% of the countries in the world, by the end of the century, we need to get to the 2030 target, which is 90% of girls fully vaccinated, 70% women screened with a high performance test twice in the lifetime, and 90% of women identified with cervical disease being managed and treated adequately. So what do we need to do to, in order to get to this target? So for the vaccination, which is 90% target, where we are at at the moment is not what we really want to be at in 2030. So it's about 30% of the girls who are vaccinated across the countries. In November 2019, and we have new uh, uh, maps soon, there is more than 100 countries that have introduced HPV vaccination in their uh, national immunization program. And really we need to focus again on the countries in Africa, Western Pacific, so that all immunization programs have really introduced HPV vaccine. So in order to do that, we need to have to secure sufficient supply of affordable HPV vaccine, which is still an issue. We need to introduce HPV vaccine into more countries, but principally in low and middle income countries. But there is no financial mechanism in place that can really stimulate the introduction of vaccines. We need to increase the quality of the coverage of delivery and improved communication and social mobilization. You know how some media can really negatively influence population to add their, uh, to the vaccines. For screening and treatment, we need to have 70% of women screened and 90% of women adequately treated. Where we are now is really far from where we should be in 2030. So these are the re results of the WHO STEP survey, the most recent one, but we are reviewing these estimates at the moment. Uh, and if we want to reach 70%, it's here, is the yellow line. And you see that most of the country are, you know, very below this, this 70 percent. And there will be a huge effort to bring all the country on the right. So what we want to do is national scale up of screen and treat. We need to have simple algorithm to be introduced for different settings. So I was mentioning uh, earlier that we are updating this, this algorithm. And it's exactly for this purpose. We, we want to have strong recommendation to facilitate really the introduction and the scale up of the different algorithm. At the moment, we have what? Molecular tests, we have cytology, we have visual inspection. So we have two, 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 one test that we need to introduce now, which is very effective, which is the HPV DNA based test. But we have lots of things coming up on the market, biomarkers, and principally AVE that uh, Sylvia was mentioning. So we want really to not only to do the recommendation for HPV testing for the by treatment, but also to follow the evidence coming out for AV and other technology so that we can really update the recommendation as we have the evidence uh, coming uh, up. So in fact, in summary, that we want to do is really to uh, increase the acceptability and the introduction of high performance alternatives and get a little bit on site psychology based screening program and VIA-based screening program for principally for uh, low and middle income countries. And what we really want to discuss is HPV testing followed by immediate treatment without triage or HPV testing plus triage, but VI doesn't seem really a very good test for triage and followed by treatment. A step in many of the countries with which we are working, this additional step of triage, principally at the beginning of the uh, a program may not be needed and may not be effective. So we really need to have more data on this one and see how we can accelerate the elimination, at least for the first few years of the program, of the program. Then we need to have sufficient affordable supplies, of course, prompt certification of new products. And we will see that with uh, uh, Anna later, price reduction strategy 
and of course, increase quality and coverage of service delivery and laboratory. We really need to strengthen the laboratory uh, network in countries. For the management of cervical cancer, 90% of women with disease should be treated. And we, we, we see exactly the same heterogeneity and inequities and access to, and mortality for, from cervical cancer than for incidence. And with Africa really having a high rate of cervical cancer mortality. And this is where we are at with cancer center uh, availability, pathology services, cancer surgery, and uh, chemotherapy. This is uh, classified by WHO region, but more interestingly, if you look at the low-income country, they are basically not have access to anything. No cancer center, no chemotherapy, no radiotherapy. So this is really where we need to work to try to bring this country at a level which is acceptable to increase access to uh, treatment. So invest in pathology, surgical oncology, radiotherapy, optimize health workforce competency for continuum of care, implement cervical cancer management guidelines, reducing cancer stigma, and ensure financial protection. This is really important. But if we implement these three pillars, these three interventions, key interventions, we really need to have the health system which follows. So the health system also needs to be strengthened. Health system governance, regulatory system, financing, human resources, training. So all these aspects of the program need to be taken into consideration and not only the introduction of the intervention. And in addition, of course, we need to have dynamic monitoring uh, system on relevant indicators. So, and strengthen, of course, the population-based cancer registry, which is essential to monitor the progress of the elimination, toward the elimination. So to finish, I really want to see that that's what we do at the moment. With what we have, we need to move. But we have innovation in the horizon that will help to really strengthen the, and accelerate the elimination with new immunization schedules, with single-dose vaccine, with more vaccine manufacturers, also, self-collection device is for HPV uh, testing, uh, artificial intelligence-based screening, lower cost of HPV test, and point-of-care screening technologies. So to conclude, I would just like to say that elimination is feasible, even at four, less than four cases per 100,000 women a year, in 90% of low- and middle-income countries before the end of the century. That status quo is not an option, and we need the number of cases will decrease dramatically, will increase if we don't do anything, because there is population growth, demographic changes, and behavior change. Pardon. And then there is, there is near term benefits for cervical cancer elimination. 100,000 of cervical cancer cases can be averted by 2030, and 250,000 cervical deaths prevented by 2030. So if we reach and we maintain this target, we really have. A, a benefit, an incredible benefit on women's health and, of course, on the economy of the country. So 90 percent for 90 percent, 95 percent of countries, the scale up to the 90, 70, 90 targets by 2030 will result in, in to elimination if we maintain these targets and be cost effective. So this is really the major message. And I'd like to thank you for your attention. <laughs>